Welcome to Virtual Worship with Redeemer Lutheran Church. It is the 20th Sunday after Pentecost, and we're so thankful to have you here with us today. As a reminder, if you're watching this on our website, you can give online just right up here. Um, if checks are your preferred mode of giving, you can continue to send those into the church office. Um, we're so thankful for each and every person who has continued to give during this uh, very difficult time. As a reminder, at 11 a.m., we have Zoom live stream Holy Communion for both Trinity and Redeemer Lutheran churches, followed by some uh, socializing that happens in breakout rooms. Um, we would absol absolutely love to see you. Um, Next Sunday is Reformation Sunday. I will be preaching, but in place of a more typical sermon, I will be offering a special children's message. So please be sure to extend an invitation um, to all of the kiddos in your life to join us for virtual worship next Sunday. Um, the Sunday after that, Sunday, November 1st, is All Saints Sunday. And it will be a special KLM worship service um, where, where uh, we will uh, celebrate the rite of confirmation. So please be sure to join us for that uh, worship service as well. We're so thankful to have you here with us today. First reading is from the book of Isaiah, the 45th chapter. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue nations before him and strip kings of their robes to open doors before him and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places, so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. I form light and create darkness. I make weal and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. Here ends the first lesson. Among all peoples is one. 
wondrous deeds. For great is the Lord and highly to be praised. Awesome is he beyond all gods. For all the gods of the nations are things of naught. But the Lord made the heavens. Give the Lord glory and honor. Give to the Lord, you families of nations. Give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory to his name. Bring gifts and enter his courts. Worship the Lord in holy attire. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He governs the peoples with equity. Give the Lord glory and honor. The second lesson is from the first book of Thessalonians. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers constantly remembering before our God and Father your works of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. In every place your faith in God has become known how you turn to God from idols to serve a living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Then he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. Jesus is put to the test. But whenever we have encounters, in this case with the Herodians, who supported Herod, who were all in this together with the emperor of Rome and the Roman Empire. Jesus knows what they're up to. They're trying to get him to say one thing so they can accuse him, uh, basically treason, and put him up for prosecution. Jesus doesn't fall into the trap. Matter of fact, he doesn't even have the coin on him. He has to ask for a denarius. And what we get out of this, basically, is the concept that we all know all along, that all things belong to God. Remember a few weeks ago, the parable of the laborers in the vineyard. And the owner of the vineyard, at the end, finally says, Am I not allowed to do with what belongs to me when he pays the laborers? Yes, yes, the owner is allowed to do 
with what belongs to the owner. We can all remember our first uh, car that we drove. Maybe, hopefully, we even owned. Mine was a 1963 Buick LeSabre. I didn't have it that long. And uh, on my way to community college, I got T-boned. Actually, the accident was my fault. I didn't see the yield sign. Fortunately, no one got hurt, but basically the car was totaled. So my real first car was a 1965 Chevrolet Caprice. 283 V8 in it, two door. The color was white. I wasn't crazy about two doors or the particular color, but it was a wonderful car. It got me back and forth when I went to school and at the State University of New York at Buffalo and back and uh, really enjoyed the car a lot that my, my dad bought for me. It needed an engine replacement and that cost as much as the original car did, about $400. And I had that car for a few years. And then finally, after Cheryl and I got married, then we drove her car that her parents gave her, a 1973 Volkswagen Super Beetle, and I had to learn to drive a stick shift for the first time. That was, that was interesting. But my favorite, the 1965 Chevy Caprice. My car, my first car. But it really wasn't mine, was it? Whenever we think of, well, this is my car, this is my home, this is my this, my that, we all can say that's part of our possessions, part of what we own, what we have. Most often when we buy something uh, and we have a loan, the bank owns it. We don't even own it. But even when we own it outright, we all know that everything belongs to God. Even the things that we own that come from materials come from the earth. And the earth belongs to the Creator. Everything to us is on loan, isn't it? A few weeks ago, we had the parable of the laborers in the vineyard. And when the vineyard owner said what he said, it's true. And Jesus, in not answering the questions about the, um, about the Herodians, what they asked him, and what belongs to Caesar and what belongs to God, Jesus doesn't fall into that trap. Instead, he asked basically, uh, usually ask them a question. In this case, he simply says, give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. As Lutheran Christians, we all know that everything belongs to God, and therefore we are just stewards of what God has given us. And that's really ultimately, I think, what I take away from this passage. Or even another reminder, just like the laborers in the vineyards parable, that all things belong to the one who has given us all things, the divine source, the creator of the world and the universe in which we live. And we are all on loan. We come into this world with nothing, we leave this world with nothing. No matter what we do and what we've earned and what has been given to us and all the things that we may have, from money to possessions to land to whatever it is, ultimately we are just simply caretakers. Let me, uh, my prayer, I guess, today for myself and for each of us is that we be the very best caretakers and the very best stewards of all that God has given us. Amen. Confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. God of praise, the heavens and all creations declare your salvation. From the rising of the sun to its setting, may the whole universe show forth your goodness. Raise up devoted stewards of all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all, may your word of justice sound forth in every place. Restore divided nations and communities with reconciling truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of light, we pray for those living with pain, illness, isolation, grief, anger, or doubt, especially our members, our nursing home and assistant living residents, our homebound members, our military, our family, friends, and enemies, and for those we name out loud. 
Join their voices in a new song, assuring them that you call them each by name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, as you raised Jesus from the dead, so raise up those who have died in you, especially Francis Van Buren and Eugene Pete Peterson. We give thanks for their witness, confident of your rescuing welcome for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in you loving arms for all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now let us pray the prayer our Lord taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.